Hey guys, and welcome to another new series in the CK2 Game of Thrones mod with me, NG Paradox. Now, for today, we're going to be playing as one of my favorite characters from the books and even the TV show. Um, we're playing as Lord Bronn. Bronn. Everyone's favorite lovable mercenary. Um, we're going to be playing as him. We're going to go from the bottom to the top, rise to power. Basically, kind of similar to what we did with the Forester, I guess. You know, in that one we kind of rose from the bottom to the top as a one county. Uh, that one took quite a long time, C took a couple of generations. And um, I'm hoping we can do actually quicker with Bronn due to his traits. Um, so we may start off a bit slow, we can't really affect events. But hopefully, as we go along, we become more powerful. Now, looking at my traits, uh, Bronn is rude, cynical, ambitious, brave, greedy, lustful a duelist and also a skilled fighter so he's got some really good traits there as you guys should know by now unless you're new to the channel I usually pick my choices so how I play and how I interact with people and the choices in events I use basically my traits to try and help me decide and try and keep the character it kind of makes it more interesting makes me pick bad choices or good choices it makes it more interesting each time we play rather than always just the same way we play so Bron will be a really good one you know he's ambitious and brave and lustful and all this sort of stuff so we should be quite interesting so that is going to be fun and i love the detail they've gone into here as you can see here here's our sigil they've actually taken the sigil from the book so they have the chain across using the black water as well as the wildfire flames so i love that from the book i loved how it sounded and it looks awesome and we've also taken the name black water so i like that name actually that's quite nice after the battle of black water and talking about details as well, in the new version of the mod, they've added in, as you can see here, sigils for the, maybe the main titles for the main family. So if you take the Iron Throne and you are maybe the Starks, it will look like the Stark sigil, which is quite nice. I really like that idea. So that's really cool. Um, just before we begin now, just one thing. To begin with, we are playing in the Feast of Crows scenario. So this does mean there are spoilers. So if you've not watched the TV show, Please go and watch it or read the books. And if you've watched the TV show, now, if you're up to date on the TV show, the TV show is actually mostly caught up with the books or has even passed the books. But there are a few differences. There are a couple of differences in the books and the TV shows that have not happened in the TV show. This could mean one of two things. Maybe these things will never happen. And for some of them, it feels like they've been replaced with different characters. Or they've decided to... Uh, wait till next season so I have to warn you if you've only watched the TV show there may be spoilers for the TV show and but definitely for the books so that's just a quick warning to you guys I don't want to be a person who ruins it for anyone so this is a quick warning and let's jump straight in so to begin with obviously we're in the Feast of Crow scenario there's a lot of war going on and uh, we're gonna be back in for now the King King Tommen King Tommen Baratheon and I like that they put the Lannister Baratheon sigil here. That's really nice. We're going to be back in him for now because Bronn obviously does not really... He doesn't really care who sits on the Iron Throne. We're looking out for our own ambitions. But Tommen at the moment is probably the horse to back. He's the one who probably has the best chances and opportunity. And also Cersei is the one who gave us our position. As you can see, we now control Stockworth. Mainly because my wife, who... Uh, if I remember correctly in the books, Cersei arranged it. We got married to Lady Lolly's Stockworth. Now, obviously, she doesn't own Stockworth, but actually, as you can see here, due to uh, Bronn's unique skills, he used her claim and his unique skills to take it. Uh, as you can see here, her sister died in the dungeons of King Tommen, thanks to Cersei, if I remember correctly, and her husband was slain by me. <laughs> so, yeah, we kind of took in control of Stockworth. Now, obviously we're quite weak, but I have a plan. My wife, Lollies, has a strong claim to the High Lordship of Rosby. So we need to get powerful enough to take Rosby. Now, Rosby, how many men do you have? 3,300. He has 3,300 men. I have about 1,400. So yeah, we're going to need a lot more power. So that's what we're going to look at. So I need to take Rosby. I need to get my wife pregnant. That is a first. We need to get her pregnant so when she dies, my child, the future of Bronn Blackwater, 
will inherit Rosby and all those lands. So that would be really useful. So we need to get her pregnant. But she's 33, so we need to do it quickly. She actually already has a kid, though. She has a little bastard, Tyrion Tanner. Now, we did want to name Tyrion Tywin, but Cersei did not like the idea of calling a bastard Tywin, especially under his circumstances. We have no idea who his father is. His father could be anyone from, like, 20 different men. It's a very sad story. Poor Lollies. Everyone in the books is so mean to Lollies. I mean, she is an imbecile, but they're so horrible to her. I actually feel really bad for her in the books, but now she's with us, Bronn. I would admit, though, if we get her pregnant and we take Rosby, I may probably plan to kill her. Because she's not very useful, and if we kill her, we can marry someone else with other claims or maybe an alliance. So uh, that is probably how I'll look at the future. But yeah. So let's begin. That's our plan for now. Let's get the ball rolling. Now... To get more strength so we can attack Rosby, I'm going to need money. So money is a priority. As well as we're going to attack Hayford and Bramsfort. We're going to get claims on these two. Because you can see here, Hayford is owned by a one-year-old who was married to Tyrek the wet nurse. 40, imagine that, a 14-year-old. Imagine you're 14, you get married off to a one-year-old. That's kind of embarrassing. But yeah, be a Tyrek the wet nurse. He actually disappeared. As you can see here, it says killed by rabble. He actually disappeared in the same riot that got Lollies pregnant with uh, Tyrion. So yeah, but we're going to get a claim on that. That's where we're going to begin. So to begin with, uh, fabricate a claim. Ooh, 16 as well. That's pretty good. Fabricate a claim. Uh, how about you improve defenses? Defend Stockworth for now. Your leading men. Collect taxes. We need money. And scheme, make sure no one's planning to kill me. We need a maester, apparently. Hmm, that's weird. Don't we normally start with a maester? Not really sure why we don't have a maester, but yeah. Okay, so that looks good. Normally as well, I normally marry off my courtiers, so they can continue to work for us. He's actually our best one, so let's get you married. Um, hmm, can I not marry you? Can I not marry you off, arrange marriage? Um, I need a girl. There we go. No, I cannot marry him off, apparently. Okay, I guess we'll choose someone else. He's the second best. 13. There we go, perfect. I like to get them married so they have kids, and then those kids can work for us as well. But we need a maester. So that's my council done. So you can see my plan. We're basically just trying to gain more power so we can take Rosby. That's going to be our main plan. And we also need a child, so have a son. And focus on, uh, I think, seduction. We increase intrigue and fertility. We definitely need a boy. Well, I mean, a girl's fine as well, but I'd rather have a son. I think Bron would be better at teaching a son. Other than that, though, there's not much else for me to do. Apart from get some important characters. So let's mark Tommen down as important. Let's go up north. Obviously, we have Jon Snow. You know nothing, Jon Snow. But yeah, we're going to mark him down. He's obviously fighting the White Walkers. And also you have the Wildlings here. Mostly under Tormund Giant's Bane. But yeah. And obviously on the wall we have uh, Denny's Malister and Cotter Pike. I like those two. Don't know why. Um, obviously we should mark Roose Bolton. At the moment he's fighting. Actually, let's mark Ramsey as well. I want to keep an eye on Ramsey. See what happens to him. At the moment he's married off to the fake Aya. Um, obviously in the TV show, as you guys have seen, it's a little different. I don't really like what they've done on the TV show, to be honest, with uh, Ramsay's marriage. I don't think that's actually... I, I don't know, I just don't think it's... Plot-wise, I don't think it's as good. I think the fake eye is much more fun. But yeah, uh, and also get Stannis, of course. Stannis is fighting the North and the Iron Throne. If he can take the North, he can actually have a really good chance to win the war. But if he can't... He likely will lose. Uh, obviously, we've got Littlefinger. Probably will inherit the Riverlands later. The Greyjoys. Aaron Crozai. Really interesting character. He's actually invading the Reach. So we can see what happens there. Normally, I find the AI for the Ironborn loses that completely. But we'll have to wait and see. Maybe the AI can surprise me. Um, Mace, obviously. Cersei. Um, Dawn. Don't think we're going to need to make any of those important characters but we have one here 
We have Mr. Aegon of Essos. This man claims to be a descendant of the Targaryens. He claims to be a true Targaryen, but he has no facts. He has no proof. Who, do, who knows who he is? He could be a fraud, but he's attacking Stannis to take the Stormlands, and then he wants to take the Iron Throne. Could be interesting. If he can prove himself to be a, a true Targaryen, you know, if he wins the wars, we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, it's an interesting one right there. Kind of a wild card, I guess. If he can take the Stormlands, again, he actually has a good chance to take the Iron Throne. So we'll have to wait and see what happens there. But he has to get the Stormlands first. And last, but of course not least, is our lovely little Daenerys. Can Daenerys withstand the Slaver's Bay? We'll have to wait and see. So a lot of things are going on. Like I said before, I'm not going to really be able to affect a lot of the things going on. Okay, we got the Maester. Perfect. I am a knight. Excellent. Sir. Long live the king. We are back in Tommen for now. For now, we're going to back Tommen. We've now joined the war against the Ironborn. So yeah, the Ironborn are all in the Shield Isles. But I normally see them get defeated by the Reach. Ooh, Ryan Forrester was released. The Blackwoods have already been defeated, but Ryan Forrester was released by the lovely Lord Ludd Whitehill. What a lovely chap. He must be a lovely guy. <gasps> Ramsay exiled Fionn. Fionn has been sent to the wall. Why would he send his beloved Reek to the wall? What a weird idea, Ramsay. After all he's done to him, <laughs> he's just sent him to the wall. Yeah, so right now, oh, I'm leading armies. Where am I? I'm in Felwood. Ah, so we're here right now. So right now, I'm actually leading armies. Um, Salahanda San? That is him, yeah? Yes, yeah, Salahanda San has just appeared. Hmm. Why is he over here? Why is he attacking that army? What a silly idea. He attacked from the sea, so he got low morale. Rosby has formed an Aegon faction. Interesting. And look, he's already lost. That was very silly, Salahanda San. Not really sure what you were thinking. Stannis has men to protect Dragonstone. So a lot of things are going on right now. I should be in Atterdale then. Yes, I am. Okay, so we're leading the armies from here. Oh, Stannis has some men here already. But yeah, uh, Aegon needs to work quickly. If he can take a lot of the Stormlands, he can win against Stannis, but if he allows the Iron Throne to start beating back Stannis, he'll be in trouble. Okay, the Ironborn, ooh. Wait, 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 wait. Did the Ironborn win? The Ironborn won the first battle, but there's Lannisters here, six, 1,600, 1,200, 1,200, wow. Okay, maybe he's just won that. The Reach's men have so, so little morale. Um, Yunkai has declared Yunkish war to enslave Marine. Uh, Littlefinger has inherited some castle. Your experience in matters of war has increased. Hmm, attack, defense, faint. Tri I think uh, Bronze a bit more of a trickster. Let's go for that. Yeah, this could be big. Wow, like I said before, I've never really seen the Ironborn actually defeat them. So this could be interesting. Oh, the Lannisters have a few more men there. Wow, that could be a big win for the Ironborn. Ooh, Rosby died. Looks like it went to Gunther. Okay, let's have a look then. So he can actually call more men. 4,100 at most. At the moment it's less, but he can in the future. 40% now, wow. This has been surprising. But the recent has 12,000 men. Jon Snow has declared war for Dawn. Everything is just going down. I love this scenario. This scenario is actually one of my favorites. Just because so many things can happen. Sometimes it goes quite simply. Not really much crazy stuff happens. Sometimes it goes absolutely ridiculous. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how the AI does this. But Jon Snow, Roose Bolton. Roose Bolton has joined Jon Snow against the White Walkers. How's his war with Stannis? 
Whoa, Stannis is winning 73%? Roos, what the hell are you doing? What is Roos doing? Wow, I've not seen him... I've not seen Stannis be that successful that quickly. And the Tullys are fighting back. Edma Tully's not finished yet. <clears throat> no one's designated as the regent. Mathos, you're ambitious, so no. It's a stupid question. The Ironborn beat them again, 52%. Wow. I'm actually really surprised. Almost always when I play this scenario, the Ironborn get destroyed straight away. Not sure what the Reach did there. Maybe it's because this is the new version of the mod. Maybe the new version, I don't know, the Reach does some stupid things? I'm not sure. How about has any of your family been fighting? Yeah, all the family's out at war. Even Mace is fighting at the moment. 59%, this is bad. If the Ironborn take the Reach, that could be bad for Tommen. He'll lose a strong ally. And there we go. This is this is a big one as well. Stannis has taken the north. How about you, little Aegon? 7%. Aegon's been a bit slow. He needs some more help. How's Dawn? Dawn is a uh, attacking Lord Paramount Stannis. So Dawn has joined Aegon. So it looks as though Dawn has joined Aegon at the moment. Okay. Ariana has married to Wells. Quentin is dead, as usual. Normally dies. But yeah, so Dawn has joined Aegon. That could give him a good advantage. But Stannis now has the North. Yes, and he's put in charge the Glovers. Ooh, late Lord Paramount Galbert Glover. He's married to an Umba, but his wife's not pregnant. And the other Glover left is Robert Glover. But he's imprisoned by Tommen, so... If Galbert was to die, that'd be bad. So has the North joined him? The North has not joined him. Oh, there we go. Yep, the North has now joined him. This could change everything. The Reach are... The, the Tyrells are losing their war. They cannot help. If Stannis can bring all the North down as quick as possible, this could be bad. And we've not defeated the Tullys yet. This is bad. Oh... Cotter Pike has died. What's going on in the Vale then? Robert Robert Aaron is doing nothing still. Denny's Malist is there. He's inherited this. How's your war going? 0% hasn't really started yet. And let's have a look at Daenerys. How are you doing, Daenerys? Ooh, she's winning. Well, not really surprised. She does have dragons. Um, <laughs> it's not too hard for her to win, I don't think. Again, I don't... I don't think I've ever seen her lose. Hmm, I'm not really sure what would happen if she did lose. I guess everyone just gets enslaved. They just take it back. Okay, we're fighting some of uh, Griffin's Roost. Littlefinger declared Harrenhal claim on the Riverlands War. Okay, so Littlefinger has gotten fed up with waiting. <laughs> Lady Barbary of the Barrowlands declared a Roost for the North. Okay. But yeah, it looks as though Littlefinger has been fed up. Oh, he still has Sansa. And he's married to a, a low-born idiot. Or slow. But she's attractive. But it looks like he's fed up with waiting, so he's declared war on the Riverlands himself. Hmm. Maybe Tommen's not the person to back. Maybe we should change sides. But the Ironborn are they're getting close. They're getting close to winning. Aegon needs to work a lot quicker here. Oh, and here we go. Baelish is going all out here. My lord, we've received word that the suspected traitor Sansa Stark has been found. She apparently has been in the care of Lord Peter Baelish since she vanished after King Joffrey's murder. She has now been revealed by Lord Peter, who no doubt has ambitions on the north. Huh, okay. I wonder. Range betrothal. Marry the bastard. No. <laughs> Not even matrilineal. Okay. But yeah, that's interesting. Okay, and the crossing. Is the crossing helping here then? This little finger. The crossing are just in the siege. Okay. 
So either way, Littlefinger will get the Riverlands. It's how quick he gets it. At the moment, we have 7,000 men defending King's Landing. And that includes me in there. Okay, we're attacking Thornton. Should be quite easy. Owen Raider has been released, but his father, Mance, is still kept in captivity. Combat is the best teacher. I become a more better commander. Excellent. 19 Marshall. Awesome. That's looking good for me. Okay. And more men have been brought up. Wendwater. Ooh, this could be... If Stans can get his men down here quickly... Ooh, yep, he's bringing 6,000 men. That could be bad for us. That's looking bad for us right now. The Tyrells are losing most of their men. Ooh, ooh, oh. Things could be changing. Cersei looks like she's come to the rescue. Okay. Lord Power Martin of the Westerlands. Who did Cersei marry? So Cer Cersei got married to Martin Lannister, one of the sons of Kevin. Okay. Interesting. But yeah, so he's leading the charge, and it looks as though he could win that. He was cross, uh, crossing the strait, but he does have more men. Is anyone coming to help? No. Not really any men are going to be coming to help. Uh, my liege, I write to you with bad news. My efforts to get some extra taxes. Damn. And we still don't have the claim, and my wife's not pregnant. So far, my plans are not going very well. Neither of my plans have happened yet. It's kind of annoying. But yeah. I think we're going to leave it there for now. I hope you guys have enjoyed. That is the beginning of this new series. I hope as we go further along, my plans can actually become complete. But wait. We've been offered a place on the council as chief general. Of course, Tommen. Hmm. How Bronn rises high. We've now... Gone from being a, a, a little mercenary to now chief general of the Iron Throne. Well, I hope you'll join us next time. And, oh! Did the Ironborn win? The Ironborn actually won that battle, then 95%. That is going to have a big effect. And Stannis is coming down from the north with 6,000 men. And we have about 6,000 men. And he has more men overall. Aegon has 27%. A lot of things are going down. I hope you'll join us next time. Good night.